Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You may notice I'm holding a very odd-shaped guitar that in the year 1958, no kid could convince his or her parents to buy them for $265. It's a big ask, you know. Son, daughter, you know, we're not getting you the wedge-shaped guitar. That's why they made less than 100 of these, and they bailed on the idea. They made even fewer Explorers, which I don't have. One of the few things I've never owned. Anyway, um, this is the trash bag Flying V, and it was found in a house in Sacramento, California, um, in a corner, covered with a bin liner. Her words, not mine, Tara Reed. Uh, and it was her uncle's guitar, and uh, he had passed away, and she brought it to Guitar Center, of all places. Thought it was worth $500. And she got a lot more than that from me. And I got it literally a day before my 40th birthday. So I've had it for six years. And it's a wonderful guitar. And there are differences between a Flying V and a Les Paul. The tone wood is different. This is Carina, or li African Limba is actually the correct term. And you have volume, volume, master tone. And I like the way V's are set up, conversely to Explorers. Explorers, the switch is here, so you have to actually switch positions. Here, it's, it's all pretty much, there's the gear shift. And they're brighter in some ways, and they're pokier, but in a good way. You know, like, like Albert King would just, you know, just sting the note. <laughs> And you've heard, you know, a Karina V from everyone from Billy Gibbons use one, Albert King, Hot for Teacher is a Karina Flying V. Um, so they're, they're a rock guitar and they're ahead of their time. <laughs> This one being the best of the three that I have, sonically, there's a mint one, there's Amos, which is brighter. This one sounds closest to the Les Paul, but you can hear the, the subtle differences in the, in the, in the sound um, because of the wood and the way it's cut. And like I said, there's only about 100 of these, maybe a little less than 100, not 81 like they say. There's more than that, I think. I think they probably stopped halfway through the third batch. Um, there are a lot of fakes out there, this not being one of them, and uh, there are some really, really cool, you know, they, they check a certain way, they have a very specific thing, there's a few internal tells that a lot of the fakers don't get because they don't have access to it. My favorite part of the guitar is uh, 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 Gino Landry was the, the, the owner, I, I'm assuming he got it from Leo's music back in the 60s or 70s, he was a gospel musician. And sometime during the guitar's life, somebody put a strap lock from a country gentleman on it. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, you could, you could fix that and put it back to stock. I'm like, why would I? That's the coolest part of this fucking thing. And it's honest. And it's real. And uh, 84902 is the serial number. Uh, these tuners are not the original ones. The original ones were completely roached out crumbled. So they're in the case. Um, these are just a set of reissue tuners on it. Um, most of the guitars I play on stage have reissue tuners on because we restring a lot. Uh, original bridge, original tailpiece. This is long gone, you know, but uh, it's a flying V, ladies and gentlemen, and they do sound a certain way. <laughs> 